Welcome in. I'm back after a long break to show you what build I've been enjoying lately in Legend 50 Onslaught. Also, this will help me kick the rust off of my video editing. This is a pretty standard build that is highly desired for fire teams in Legend Onslaught. The current Onslaught meta is one Well of Radiance Warlock and one or two of these Orpheus Rig Hunters. The idea behind that team makeup is that the Orpheus Rig Hunter can consistently tether large groups of enemies, helping to lock down tons of enemies and create lots of orbs to make sure the Well of Radiance Warlock has a well available when needed. But even as you can see here, I'm playing with my friend Dark, who's on a Solar Titan, and we had a random with us running another Orpheus Rig Tether Hunter, and we got the clear pretty seamlessly. So first of all, Orpheus Rig. This is an exotic that got tons of play early on in Destiny 2, and has made a bit of a comeback lately. It makes it so you get super energy back for every enemy hit with your tether. So a large group of enemies will give you back over half your super energy. Let's look at the subclass. Deadfall is great because it lingers for so long that you can hit multiple waves of enemies with one super and get m even more super energy back, which utilizes Orpheus Rig even better. Gambler's Dodge allows you to get your snare bomb back when you dodge next to enemies and your snare bomb is important in order to suppress targets. You want a good way to suppress targets so you can utilize over here Stylish Executioner to the full extent. This helps you get out of a lot of trouble and be able to go invisible much more often with this build than if you took Trapper's Ambush. There it is. Going back, I like Vortex Grenades because it pulls in all the enemies into one location and does a lot of damage. Then the other aspect, Vanishing Step. This allows you to go invisible when you use your dodge. Super helpful. So now when you dodge, you can go invis and get your snare bomb back. Then for the fragments, Echo of Instability makes your grenade kills give your void weapons volatile rounds, which helps proc more stylish executioner and does more explosive damage. Echo of Starvation to get Devour a crazy strong heal when you pick up an orb or void breach, and you can keep Devour proccing just by getting kills after you pick up that first orb. Echo of Reprisal gives you super energy when you defeat enemies when surrounded, helps get even more tethers off. Then Echo of Persistent makes all your important buffs last longer. As for weapons, my main weapon is Graviton Lance, a void pulse rifle that causes void explosions on kills. Helps to do more AoE damage to large groups. I really love it. If I had a Buried Bloodline, I'd probably run that instead though. And if I was running Buried Bloodline, I would probably take off the Echo of Starvation because Buried Bloodline gives you Devour. Uh, and I would probably run Echo of Harvest or Echo of Obscurity. Um, Echo of Harvest, defeating weakened targets creates orbs of power and a Void Breach, or Echo of Obscurity makes you invis after a finisher. I don't remember where it is. And then for my heavy, I have a Void Rocket Launcher. Right here I have Red Herring. There's not a lot of good Void Rockets, but this one is craftable and does good damage. I have mine crafted with Reload Speed Frame, Quick Launch, Impact Casing, Field Prep, and Lasting Impression. Lasting Impression is really good for Onslaught bosses because it does so much damage and you don't have to worry about hitting them with a rocket and then the boss becoming immune because, well, they do that a lot in raids. But for this, it's perfect. For my Kinetic, I have a few options I play with. For burst damage, I like Scatter Signal with Slice and Controlled Burst. For like utility, I would use Pardon Our Dust or just any disorienting grenade launcher with auto loading. This one has Vorpal too. Or you can use Riptide for damage and freezing, but it's really fallen off due to some enemies now having resistance to stasis. For the mods on the helmet, I use Harmonic Siphon to create orbs off of void weapon kills, Heavy Ammo Finder to make sure I'm getting enough heavy ammo for each encounter, and Heavy Ammo Scout to help my team get more heavy ammo. On the gloves, Firepower so my grenade kills create more orbs. Bolstering detonation to get class ability energy when doing damage with a grenade. And harmonic loader to help with my rocket and graviton lance reloads. On the chest I put resistance mods. I have solar and arc and then a concussive. That helps mitigate the ground slams and tormentor slaps. On the legs I have two void weapon surge mods to boost my void weapon damage and recuperation to get heals every time you pick up an orb. Devour does give you a heal when you pick up that first orb. It just doesn't do it every time you pick up an orb if you already have Devour procced, I think. I might be wrong on that. I'm not certain. I'll go test that right now. Then for the cloak, you got time dilation to increase the duration of armor charges and powerful attraction to collect orbs when I dodge and bomber to reduce grenade cooldowns also when you dodge. For the artifact, there's not a ton that really helps you that much as a void hunter, but 
for this build specifically overload pulse rifle make sure your graviton lance is overcharged and then uh, if i was running a grenade launcher i'd throw that on uh wished it into being while your super is nearly fully charged ability final blows spawn orbs of power more orbs maybe sometimes if i'm running the scatter signal i'd use unraveling orbs pick up an orb of power grant strand weapons unraveling rounds and then horde shuttle damage unravel targets with a weapon occasionally spawns a threadling not much help but it's some help and then dragon's bite breaking a combatant's shield with the strand weapon has a chance to suspend or freeze so if i'm running scatter signal and then argent ordinance makes your rocket launcher do more damage and consumes an armor charge as for stats on the build i prioritize 100 resilience which gives you a huge damage resistance, 30%, and then get your discipline as high as you possibly can without going too low in mobility. 70 mobility and 80 discipline works for me, uh, but the main thing is just get your resistance up to 100. That's the build. Here's some highlights from Legend 50 Run. Let me know if you try this out. Thanks for watching. Peace.